Hi, I'm Lieutenant Kevin Quinn from the Township of Ocean Police. Welcome to NJ Law. We're live here in the studio tonight. That means you can pick up your little telephone at home and give us a call here in the studio if you so desire, and I know you'll want to. Um, our number is 681-3331. That's 681-3331. Every once in a while, that'll show up on the bottom of the screen in case you forget, because I can never remember it. That's why I have it written down on the paper. Um, I have three guests in the studio with me. Uh, we even have an interesting new set that looks very comfy to all you folks at home. Um, but it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. We're going to have a little bit of uh, conversation here, a little bit of fun. Everybody here are, fr are friends. And um, I, hopefully it'll be interesting and informative, as always. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, not going to strap myself in. <laughs> and uh, with me tonight are uh, two chiefs and a sergeant. And uh, so I'll have to introduce the chiefs first, right, Jack? Otherwise, oh, absolutely. okay. Uh, we have Chief Robert Todd from the Inner Lake and Police Department. Bob, thanks for coming and uh, and helping us out, as well as Vern Henderson from Spring Lake Heights Police Department. And uh, Vern, especially on short notice, I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out and coming down. Um, and as last but not least, I have Sergeant Jack Hill sitting next to me in the um, in the shotgun seat, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> riding shotgun with me. Uh, from the Belmar Police Department. Now, um, what we wanted to talk about, folks, is the last show we spoke about a lot of traffic matters, and uh, it uh, um, inspired a lot of interest from you folks at home. We had a lot of calls. Uh, we, I think we've just about beat the who has to right away in a traffic circle question to death, but if you have any other traffic questions, we'll be sure to try to, uh, to handle them as well as if you're uh, viewing from the Spring Lake Heights or Inner Lake Inn or Belmore areas, uh, please give us a call. Uh, let your chiefs know how they're doing. <laughs> oh, boy, did I put my foot in my mouth that time. And um, <clears throat> they'll be glad to discuss some of, the, uh, some of the issues that might interest you in those particular uh, jurisdictions. Um, first thing I think we'll do, as I said, we're going to talk about some traffic uh, matters. We're going to talk about the State Chiefs Association um, as it pertains to traffic safety and education, and uh, Jack is from the Traffic Officers Association, so we'll kind of cover the whole gambit. They have some new programs that they're trying to do to promote safety, education, and uh, help save some lives uh, here in Monmouth County, Ocean County, and, uh, well, hopefully throughout the state. Um, what I'm going to do first is go to uh, Chief Todd from Interlaken, and uh, Bob, as I said, thanks for for coming, and we uh, this is your first time visitor here, and hopefully you won't be a last time visitor. I guess it depends how things go here. Um, Interlaken is an interesting town, uh, besides the fact that I grew up, well, we both grew up in Interlaken. Um, it's uh, kind of, besides being stuck between a couple of lakes, it's also uh, a very interesting, nice residential community. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about Interlaken, and, and actually, as you're speaking, I think we shot a little bit of video of some of the streets, anyway, in town. Um, go for it. I would, you know, start wherever you'd like. Well, Interlaken is a strictly residential community. I think there's only one other in the state, uh, which is in Ocean County, that is also strictly residential. Uh, it has approximately 400 homes, roughly 1,200 residents. Uh, it's just under a mile. It's about seven blocks long by five blocks uh, wide. Uh, the speed limit throughout most of the town is 25 miles per hour. It's because it is residential. 25? For the most part. For all you folks at home, 25 miles an hour. We'll probably even see some of the signs as we're going. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Uh, which is enforced by the police department, which are a five-man police department, uh, supplemented by part-time officers. Uh, police do run radar periodically on the streets as well as when they patrol. Um, all the streets in town... Are, are named after a town in Switzerland. Interlaken is pronounced in Switzerland. Uh, there's Grassmere, Bendemere, Buttermere, Fernmere, Bridlemere. So once in a while somebody gets lost or whatever, and they come over and they say, well, I know there was a mirror in the street. Well, that doesn't really narrow it down too much. Uh, but it's a very nice community. You can see from the uh, video uh, that there's a lot of trees. It's a very treed community, which, of course, poses a problem in the fall with all the leaves coming down, but uh, it looks very nice. It's very, uh, well, we have... Um here as we're looking at the video. Um, I'll tell you what, Bob, I don't know where we are. Are we on Grassmere? Yeah. That looks like Grassmere, yeah. So Grassmere is actually the main east-west um, uh, street in town, and where those blinker lights are is actually Westra, 
which across the bridge in uh, Ocean Township turns into Monmouth Road. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's Grassmere right on there. That's the main traveled street. We also have half of Corley's, which is, has quite a bit of traffic, and half of Wickapeka Drive, which is also great. You know, I've lived in town all my life, a uh, member of the volunteer fire company there also, and uh, basically know most of the residents. And that also helps to keep some of our crime rate down because you get to know people's habits, their vehicles, and uh, we do heavy in, in the patrol area. Uh, we they still don't let people park out on the street uh, overnight? We have an overnight parking ordinance, which in the event you know, that, that somebody does have to leave a car out for whatever reason, they just call us. But we do have an overnight parking ordinance. We feel that helps uh, to keep the crime rate down in the fact that you could be driving down the street and look down. If you see a car parked there, uh, you'll go check it out. Uh, in other towns, that, that vehicle might be parked there, and it could be mixed in with other cars, and you wouldn't even notice it. Uh, so I think that does help keep our crime rate very low. Well, the other nice thing um, about Interlake, and it is, it is a nice, quiet, residential, no commercial uh, buildings at all um, in town. Is that changing at all? Or I know that they were talking a while back, uh, some people running businesses out of their homes. I guess that really wouldn't affect. That's no, Now, they, they just more or less cleaned up an ordinance that we had from years ago uh, that had dealt with businesses, but they're not going to allow any kind of businesses. I mean, what is a business? Is it a business that has a person has a computer in their... Uh, house with a modem that's it basically cleared up and, and modernized the ordinance okay um, next I believe uh, if we can let's uh, switch to Vern Vern um, you've been in Spring Lake Heights for cheapers how long now 27 years you like it I love it well, that's good <laughs> I'm sure everybody in Spring Lake Heights gonna like to hear that maybe you could tell us a little bit about that and I think uh, I think Dean was nice enough to sh run out and shoot a little video of um, of uh, Spring Lake Heights too. So as that comes up, we can speak about that. But about how big is the town? Uh, Spring Lake Heights is about uh, one and three quarters miles square, uh, six to seven thousand population, uh, primarily year-round population. Uh, many years ago, it was a, more of a resort community. We had uh, a lot of group rentals, a lot of people that rented their homes out during the summer months. Uh, at this point, it's it's primarily a year-round community. We I have. Think, I'm sorry. As oh, okay. as we're speaking the video is running and I think we're on Route 71 probably. Uh, that's correct that's uh, Route 71 uh, headed in a northbound direction uh, Highway 71 travels through Spring Lake Heights it covers about uh, a mile and a half uh, along that corridor from uh, Seagirt and into Wall Township on the other end we uh, we have about uh, 3,000 homes in town 750 of them are condos and uh, 700 apartments. We have two golf courses, um, both private, uh, and we're about uh, three quarters of a mile from the beach. Our element, we have one school, it's an elementary school and, uh, and three nursery schools. Uh, our elementary school has about 350 students, and we're a sending district of Manasquan High School. Now, the, um, your one school is actually right on 71. That's correct. Which, um, how, what kind of problems is that I, I, I'm not sure I know what the speed limit is down on 71 in that I area. I 71 is 40 miles per hour. Okay, and then it probably drops down pretty quick. It drops down when you enter into Wall Township on the northern end. Uh, it drops down to, uh, I believe it's 30 in one section. Um, we have uh, two county highways, uh, which are Lair Road and Warren Avenue. And that's uh, most of our traffic in and out to the parkway and uh, people going to work in the morning. And uh, with the school being right on 71 in the middle of that 40, do you have a lot of enforcement problems there with uh, schools, while schools in session? We have a 25-mile-an-hour uh, zone while, while children are present, and mm -hmm. uh, we do enforce that very heavily. Uh, we station a car there every morning uh, just to uh, make sure the kids are in and out of school without problems. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I want to go back to uh, talking to both of you in a second, but... Um, let me jump to Jack. Jack, hi. Thanks for coming. This Thanks is pretty you. comfortable, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's uh, just good for donuts and coffee right here. <laughs> <laughs> These are actually, folks, you got it. Just so you know what we're talking about, we have, uh, we found car seats that were actually taken out of a van in the back, and uh, we thought it would be interesting to try sitting on something different, and they're actually pretty comfortable. Got your head rest, so <laughs> you won't hurt yourself, Bob, if, if there's any... Uh, <laughs> if you yeah. nod off in the middle of the show. Uh, anybody else nodding off? No, I guess not. Um, 
Belmore is an interesting. Uh, also, I guess a lot of people who may not have lived in um, in in this area of Monmouth County uh, for a very long time probably don't remember when most of the seashore communities were, um, with probably the exception of Interlake, and I guess, but were very heavily um, seasonal as far as residents. Um, is Belmore still that way, or partially? Well. Belmar, for, for the most part, again, we are a resort town. Um, we have a lot of rentals in town, summer and winter rentals, uh, which uh, there's a, a general feeling that, the, the, that uh, Belmar is a very good family-oriented town. Uh, the resort uh, area in the summertime, of course, presents a unique set of problems that we deal with uh, accordingly. Uh, we have a lot of special events in town. Um, but it's a, it's a great town. I, I grew up there, as did most of my family, and uh, I always try to describe Belmar as a small town America at its finest. Uh, you have a great business district, something that a lot of townships don't have in uh, Monmouth County. Uh, you can walk anywhere in Belmar and you can go to the store or uh, see your neighbors. It's, uh, it's a nice town. One square mile. Uh, we do have a year-round population of about 7,000. And in the summertime, it um, goes up to about 45,000 residents. And that's because of the, the rentals, the bungalows and the various uh, condos in, in the town. Our police force is uh, 21 men. And in the summertime, that goes up to approximately 65 officers, male and female, that are uh, positioned throughout the town for quality of life type enforcement. Uh, and that includes speed enforcement, uh, enforcement of other traffic laws. So one of the things we did in Belmore uh, several years ago, we had a community policing survey done. And we found that our residents, while they're concerned about things like crime and uh, safety of their streets, uh, lighting conditions of their streets, their primary interest was in traffic safety. Uh, overwhelmingly, they, they were concerned about speeding. They were concerned about being able to cross Ocean Avenue. They were concerned about stop sign violations, all the things that we in traffic uh, hold dear to our hearts. So uh, based on that survey, we have a very aggressive traffic safety program, um, including speed enforcement. Uh, again, our pedestrian safety program, I know that's been in the news quite often. Um, and it's proven very effective uh, because our residents told us they want to be able to cross Ocean Avenue safely. Uh, so uh, we're, we're moving along in, the, in those areas. You can always put the bridge up as it's doing now and, and yeah, we, slow uh, everybody down. Uh, no, we, we, we went through that one time. Uh. <laughs> okay, we'll stay away from that one. Yes. Um, <laughs> but you know what's interesting is, and I want to uh, talk about, the, um, uh, talk about the, the whole traffic concept, but one thing occurs to me as we're talking is that um, the... All three of the towns are unique in that we all read the trades, we all read Law and Order and all the magazines, and, and some of the terms that are um, in the forefronts nowadays, problem-oriented policing, community-oriented policing, uh, all those types of things, and probably what they miss in, in publications such as that is that you guys do it best right here. I mean. I know in Interlaken, you know, Bobby, we grew up there together, and the officers in Interlaken were, uh, were good guys. We knew all of them. They knew us, and they knew most of the time if you were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing. Um, but in a way, that's good. I mean, it, it's, that's the way the police should be, and I'm sure in Spring Lake Heights, Vern, it, it's the same way. Probably know most of the residents, if not by name, by sight. Um, if any of them didn't know you, now they get to watch TV and, That's true. and tune in and give you a call. Jack, in Belmore is the same way. And there's something that's lost a little bit in some of the larger communities. We're trying to get back to that in Ocean because there was a time in Ocean Township when we didn't have that many officers and we knew most of the people in town, but now it's, you know, I guess we're around 30,000 and we just, we have uh, 58 cops um, and there's just probably a lot less of an opportunity. So now we have to make up somewhat for lost time using bicycle patrols, 
uh, trying to get the guys out of the cars, I, I try to do that myself. I think that's uh, invaluable to be able to, uh, and a place like Belmore, you can actually, it even works better if you have a shopping area and you have an officer on foot or in Spring Lake Heights, and especially in Interlake, you guys got to get the bike, we, Bob. We got a bike. Oh, okay, good. Except we've had manpower problems as to many. <laughs> Uh, and in officer injuries and sickness, and we weren't able to do it. But hopefully and you don't have the, the, uh, that ability that I might have to just kind of switch people around. It's just we not don't have that many people around. to switch around. Yeah. Well, they say the worst thing that happened with uh, law enforcement for community relations was the patrol car because it put us in a uh, cone or a shell mm -hmm. and separated us from the people. Yeah, separated by two tons of metal. And, yep. and, and now in our... Yeah. For instance, Ocean Township is a little bit more spread out, so obviously motorized patrol is is needed. Uh, but I encourage the guys whenever they get a chance, you know, go over to Middlebrook Plaza or um, uh, the town shops, park the car, get out, and talk. You know, just at least talk to the people in the shops. I don't know how you folks at home. Maybe you can give us a call and tell us what you think about that. But um, uh, I think that when we lose contact with the public. We do ourselves a disservice, and we wind up, unfortunately, in a position that maybe to some extent a, a city like Los Angeles has, because they've kind of lost touch with those people they serve. Um, and I'd kind of like us to, to think of it more as like team policing, kind of from the standpoint of citizens and us. I don't know, Vern, uh, what do you think? I think you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the term community policing is a new term, but the concept has been around forever, particularly in small towns. Uh, even in, uh, in the larger cities, uh, the quote, quote, beat cop was always the backbone of the police department, and, uh, and basically he knew everyone on his beat. Uh, in smaller towns, uh, it's the same thing. You've, uh, you've basically, you've grown with the town. You've spent, in my situation, I've spent 27 years there. I, I feel that I know a good number of people. Uh, I have a 13-man police department and I hopefully as years go by the people that work for me will know more and more people. Um, my dispatchers uh, have a tremendous amount of contact with, uh, with our citizens. Whether it just be uh, someone calling up to say they've lost a dog or there's someone uh, suspicious in their neighborhood, uh, the dispatchers are a tremendous link to, uh, to community policing. Um, as far as your, the dialogue with the citizens of your of your town, Bob. I mean, in Italy, like, and like I said, I, I hope I didn't no, <laughs> no. take everything you were going to say. But no, I, I remember, and and guys like um, um, Chief McGill, who's retired. Uh, you know, I still see him, and uh, probably one of the reasons I'm a cop now because of the way he uh, interacted with with all of us. You know, and. It showed that you could be a, a decent, very decent person, and still be a, a good cop. And you know, it, it's it's helpful. There's little small services a small police department does for the residents. I mean, whether it be a senior citizen that uh, her furnace won't come on, well, rather just call I'll call you know call a service person and hang up the phone. Well, we might go over there. I tell the office go over there, check it out. You know, hit the the reset button. It doesn't hurt anything. Because even if it didn't fix it, you gained a friend there. The, the people see that you've gone and done something. You've tried. You've done your best. And, and it does help for relations. And you're talking about with the children. And we have a picnic every year in, in August, a uh, town picnic. And what I've tried to arrange and have, have the officers there, have a patrol car there, have the fire company come, have the off operation uh, identicate, which is put on by the county uh, sheriff's department mm -hmm. and uh, everybody gets out they look at the they meet the officers they look at the equipment and uh, I think it helps it helps foster good relations we really don't have a problem with the uh, juveniles in town and and once again as I said the that contact that ability to do little things for people it's not a big deal you know we uh, I I often shoot my mouth off about it you know that that Jeepers, you know, we're running around for eight hours, and sometimes we're busy, uh, you know, and granted, but a lot of times there's some downtime, and if that means get out of the car and go into the high school or one of the other schools and just let the people see you, you know, it's, uh, right now we run into a lot of them at 7-Eleven, <laughs> and uh, or Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a form of community policing. That's right. Well, that's and right. that's it. That's right. And there was a time when, um, when through 
maybe our own uh, our own mistakes. We were telling the guys, I don't want you out of the car too much. I don't, you know, or I make sure you're calling out, or uh, you know, to where it almost got to be a real pain in the backside for him. Um, instead of saying no, stop at the service station. You know, talk to the. And it's amazing how much information we get that helps us. Um, and even though the people, I'm not saying it's like everybody's whispering in our ear, they're just talking about, hey, did you happen to notice, you know, that house is empty? Oh, I, you know, you didn't know, or you, and, uh, and the next thing you know, something comes of it. Jack, how about in uh, Belmar, it, when, especially during the summer, do you put walkers out? Or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, in Belmar, I'm, I'm a second-generation police officer there. My dad was there, and, and going back to what Vern said, uh, when growing up there, you knew the cops, and the cops knew every kid in town. And if something happened, they knew who to go talk to. Uh, presently in Belmore, under the leadership of Chief Lynch, following up what Chief Allen and Chief Minutti have done over the years, uh, and Chief Monaghan, we have a very aggressive community policing uh, program. Um, we have officers assigned to certain areas where basically our group rentals are in the summertime because that's in the summertime that's where our, our, a lot of our problems come, stem from and they uh, we're approaching it from the standpoint that even the, the visitors are our residents too in that if they don't understand what the rules are they can't necessarily blend in with the community and, and be um, productive in the community so we have officers out there we have walking beats out there uh, we've always had a walking beat on Main Street uh, for the businesses uh, in the residential areas. That's what our special officers are used for, our walking beats, and they're instructed to, um, again, you have to enforce the law. There, there can't be any doubt about that. If, if a ticket has to be written, the officer has to write it, but they're also instructed to make contact with the people and explain the law to them so that we don't have uh, a lot of conflicts and a lot of uh, animosity between neighbors. All right, you know what I want to do? I, I want to switch gears here just a second. But first, um, let me take this call. Hi, you're on. Dick? Yes. How I are have, you? I have a question about uh, stop signs. I understand we have one in our township that's supposed to be illegal. In well, other words, we asked the officer why isn't it being enforced, and he said it's an illegal stop sign. That might, might very well be happening. Where is it? It's off of County Line Road and New Prospect. In... Um, Jackson. In Jackson, there's. Do you, Dick? Do you realize how they have to do stop signs? It's it's ridiculous. Anytime you need any kind of traffic um, uh, enforcement devices placed, they have to get the okay of the state. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to let Jack talk about this because I'm sure he's well versed in and how you get traffic control devices. And it's it's a whole lot more complicated than anyone would imagine. You know, well, for instance, with stop signs. To even have a stop sign, uh, the uh, State Department of Transportation using the manual for uniform traffic control devices, um, they require there's what they call warrants, a justification to have that sign there. And one of the justifications is that there's five traffic accidents at that location in a given year in a certain traffic volume, et cetera. So once you have that established, then you have to write the ordinance and get it approved by the Department of Transportation or the county. Uh, engineering department if it's on a county roadway and then the stop sign becomes legal uh, once DOT certifies that it's okay and it's written into your borough ordinance as a stop street and uh, then it's enforceable but that that process isn't as easy as I just said it it takes time it takes coordination it takes uh, a lot of good work on your police department's part to be able to have that relationship with state DOT and to get the uh, appropriate ordinances passed at the municipal level now, Dick, uh, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but I know, and we've had other traffic uh, officers on also in the past, and, and it is a very complex um, and tedious process, and as well as the exact height measurement type of, uh, or the design of the sign, how far it's got to be from the intersection, there's a whole lot of things that go into it. So I don't know whether they put the stop sign up in, in anticipation of getting the okay, and we're hoping that that would at least cut down some of the uh, accidents at that uh, location. But but hopefully they will be um, will be 
making it legal, so to speak, uh, very soon. Have you talked to anybody from Jackson about it? Yes, I called once, and it didn't seem to have the all effect because they say it's illegal. <laughs> well, <laughs> one would hope that uh, that that it will. Do they? I, I don't even. Does Jackson have a, tra a traffic bureau? Do you know? Yes, I do. Okay. I think the problem, the main problem, is half the people go through it at 40 miles an hour, and half the people are stopping. I guess the people that know it's illegal go through at 40 miles an hour, and the other people <laughs> stop. Common sense. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Common sense uh, yeah. isn't uh, at a premium, I guess, there. But um, try giving them a, uh, a call one more time. Do me a favor, Dick. To mm -hmm. where, where's that stop sign again? County line and where? It's where county line goes off onto New Prospect. Isn't that near their headquarters? No, no. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what. I'll make you a deal. Uh, if you give them a call to their traffic division, um, maybe they can... Uh, Look into it, and in the meantime, I'm going to give them, shoot them a call tomorrow, and uh, and see if exactly what the story is, and um, maybe one between the two of us, maybe we can get it straightened out. Very good, thank you very right. much. Thanks for watching. Uh, I think we have somebody else, but I don't know who they are. Uh, oh, okay. Hi, Ed. Ted. My name is Ted. Ted, sorry. The problem of Massey Park. Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, I've met a lot of police officers. A lot of them see me cutting grass. I own landscaping business, and they wave to me. I wave back, and especially in uh, Allenhurst, into Lake, and Asbury Park. And through the years, for once in a while, I get pulled over for a motor vehicle violation. I'm talking like an overdue rejection sticker. I had that at one time. But most of the time, I would meet a police officer for something. They're very nice and polite when they're issuing a ticket. But what can you do when you do run into an officer who basically does have a bad attitude? Um, Keeping it short, one time I got pulled over when I had a rejection sticker on the truck. Um, this was in the deal, in fact. Police officer pulled me over and uh, he asked me what was wrong, why I didn't do it, you know, get the uh, repairs done. And I explained to him in a nice, polite manner, and he started raising his voice to me. He's had a very bad attitude. When he first pulled me over, he had the attitude like, I'm a cop, I'm better than you. You know, the real arrogant high on myself kind of an attitude mm -hmm. and he was so bad I want when he gave me the ticket I wanted to tell him off but I didn't want to do that because I was afraid of repercussions what D can you discretion is sometimes the better part of valor Ted I'm sorry what I said discretion is sometimes the better part of valor uh, meaning at that point may not be a time to confront that but I'll tell you what I'm going to put the chiefs on the hot seat because um, every once in a while they do get these and I'll tell you from my standpoint just before I turn over to them if somebody calls and speaks to me, because usually they're looking for the officer in charge and, uh, and a lot of times the call gets uh, put down to me, um, I look into all of those things and I speak to the officers. Sometimes uh, it's groundless, sometimes it's not, but from my standpoint as an administrator, I want to know what's going on out in the street and I can't be with my officers 24 hours a day, obviously. Mm -hmm. So if people let me know and I see a pattern developing, I can deal with that appropriately. However, now maybe Vern, maybe I'll pick on you first. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, very often there are, there are conflicts in personalities, uh, whether it be between a police officer and a person that they stop or just people in general. Uh, sometimes you, um, you meet someone and you just don't hit it off. Uh, <laughs> That's the easiest way to explain it. Um, that's not to say that it's right. A police officer is a, is a public employee. And um, as, you, as you said, Kevin, uh, these are things that have to be monitored. If people call in and we do see a pattern, we can do something about it. If, uh, someone is, if a police officer is generally um, bad with the public, uh, there are means to do things about it. We have internal affairs officers now in, uh, in every police department uh, that handle uh, citizen complaints uh, from the, the most minute to the most serious and generally that's the direction it would take if it if it is something that continually happens and involves many people not just uh, an isolated situation well Ted I I don't know if that answers your question but as I said um, call hey, the police department and speak to someone who's uh, who's either the supervisor then or give one of the chiefs a call when they're in okay uh, we, uh, I'm not kidding. We provide a service mm -hmm. to the community, and uh, and when we're not doing as well as we think we should, mm -hmm. somebody.